and I go to the to the call room. And just before I go to the call room, Romain and uh, and James uh, told me, uh, "Remember to smile." Huh? I was like, "What?" I go to the Olympic final, and you tell you you you, you guys you, you tell me to smile. And, and I think this was this was the best advice before the Olympic final that I could have because if you look at this final, I'm the only one relaxed before the final. Yeah. Welcome to Social Kick. I'm Brian Lundquist. We got a partial crew, Luke Paddington, and joining us from down under, Frenchman getting ready for his home Olympics, Flo Manadu. What's going on, buddy? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I've been uh, traveling to Australia uh, two weeks ago, and uh, I started a long training camp, six weeks. It's the first time for me, honestly. So uh, I'm excited, but uh, I'm also a bit... Uh, not scared, but I never have been away from home six weeks in a row. So wow. I like the idea because I think it's uh, it's important to have a big block of training, mm -hmm. and I'm alone. So uh, I have the the, the session of, uh, of James, of course, and uh, my uh, my best friend is a is a coach, so he, he coached the session of James. But it's a new uh, new way of training for me. But mm -hmm. in a way, I'm excited, and in a way, I'm like, wow, how it's how it's gonna it's gonna work, you know? Oh, Very interesting. Cool. I, yeah, so what, yeah, I like to I like to change. <clears throat> what what's new and different about it? Um, normally, when you are a normal swimmer, a young swimmer, you have a coach that you see every day, and you can have feedback like during the session and everything. And I think through the years, you have more um, experience, so you can understand more your body, and you don't need as much as feedback as before. And um, I need a lot of stuff in my in my life. I need a big part of my social life, and I need the big part of my training life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I mix them. So my best friend is coaching me, but on the session of James, which I like because uh, I have everything in the same time. I don't have to split. Uh, okay, now it's time for my social life, and now it's time for for the training. So I can enjoy my training and being with my best friend, but. I'm training hard, so this is important for me, especially yeah. at my age. Especially at my age, honestly, I couldn't do that when I was 25. Sure, I, yeah, I had a similar experience with George Ravel, who is one of my closest friends. And when George yeah. in 2013, uh, he was around your age back then, actually, and I, I just w was his mirror. So I, he would swim, and I would show him a video of what he did, or I'll tell him what he looked like. And he took that data. That I just told him, and he he coached himself basically for a while. He lived on his own, and and I saw that too with Tony back then, and like 2014, 2015, doing the same kind of thing as well. Just getting the feedback, but not coaching, but following a program. So it's interesting. You're at that stage now, given I mean you've been an international stage since for 13 years. I mean you've done it. Being yeah. all, what, what what do you think? Why why this big training chunk of six weeks? What made you? want to do that what made you want to like after euros which you medal congrats and what made you Thank want you. to jump into that after christmas i mean you know most beautiful places in the world and brisbane's like a mecca yeah. of swimming right now yeah today's like uh 38 degrees feeling 47 so <laughs> today's pretty hard for me <laughs> even if i live in the south of france but uh uh, I thought about that, um, I would say, in April or May uh, last year. Yeah. And I was like, I think I need to get away from France because of the, not not necessarily the pressure uh, of the Olympics, because the home Olympics are different. I talk, mm -hmm. about, uh, talk about that because I, I talked with uh, Bruno Fratus mm -hmm. uh, when he was mm -hmm. in Rio and told me mm -hmm. it's really different, so make sure that you're ready. And I had some chat with him. And I was like, okay, I think with this, I am ambassador, kind of ambassador of Paris 2024. I have a lot of sponsor. And for the sponsor, you're like, um, you, you owe them a few days. Yeah. But when you have many, it's not yeah. to be many days, but they don't understand that because for them, it's only, only them. So I was yeah. like, okay, I need to get away because I don't want to have uh, my, uh, my agent uh, say like, Okay, uh, flow is available on this weekend, but weekends are uh, meant to recover. So if I work hard during the week and in the weekend I'm with uh, the sponsor and I travel to Paris and to, I don't know, Barcelona to do some shooting, I think I cannot have a big block of training. So now I eat, I sleep, and I train. And of course I enjoy in the weekend, but I enjoy the way I want. It's not yeah. like I will go yeah. to a shooting. Uh, 
because it's not something that I like to do that, but it's not something that I enjoy a lot, you know. So this block is uh, it's here for yeah. that. And uh, I had James like since uh, since I came, and he yeah. told me the more yeah. you are aware of France during this uh, period, I mean, in, uh, into the Olympics, the best it is. Yeah. So I choose to uh, I choose to do six six weeks now. Normally I had to do ten weeks, but ten weeks I was like maybe it's too much because yeah. uh, after three weeks you can be like okay now it's it's a half. I have three more weeks and I will go home. But when you have ten weeks. After three, three weeks, you have seven more weeks. And I think yeah. for, the, for, for, for the mood, if you're a bit down because I, I will miss my friends, I will miss my family, and, uh, I think it's, it's normal. I yeah. think I choose the, 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 right, uh, the right timing and the, the, the right amount of time um, now. So I count, uh, I count yesterday, and I think I will spend uh, on... I wrote it to my uh, second coach, I mean... I will explain you later, but <laughs> this is uh, what I have uh, 30, 31, uh, I think it's that 31 weeks from the 1st of January okay. until the moment I leave for the training camp for the Olympics. And I will spend seven weeks uh, out of France, uh, 17, sorry, 17 weeks out of France. A training camp competition, and I will spend 14 weeks in the in the Antilles, where it's like, yeah, my my town. So I will go after to Stellenbosch, uh, 20 days. Oh. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I will go after Stellenbosch. We have like three competitions, so I will do it in a row. So kind of a trip. Yeah, and uh, after we we'll spend one month in uh, in Antilles, and in May I will do the same before the the Marino Storm. I will spend. Uh, Probably, I'm not sure, I didn't confirm yet, but I like the idea to, to spend two more weeks in Stellenbosch and come back for the, the Barcelona Marathon. And after I have my, uh, my trials in June. So I want yeah. to, to, to be aware of friends because I train better. I don't have the, um, the excitement of the, the, the French Riviera because I'm 33, I have friends. Yeah. yeah. And I know that sometimes, yes, come for a drink, come to, I don't know, play pétanque yeah. or... Stuff yeah. like this, you know, that you can be yeah. like, oh, it's just one time, plus one time, plus one time. And because at the end of the day, it's too much. So now I'm away. I have no uh, yeah. no choice. I have to train, eat and sleep. So uh, this is what I do. So it's sometimes hard, but um, I know that's for me, for the Olympics, is very good. So so the Frenchman, talking about food, Frenchman in Brisbane. I, I, listen, the coffee in Australia is fantastic. I think the coffee is fantastic. Yeah. But uh, but how, how are you managing your food and your French lifestyle out there in Brisbane? Um, I don't have a French lifestyle, I think. <laughs> I, tra I travel way too much. So I'm kind of, uh, I don't know if we say the same in English, chameleon? It's the, the yeah, 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 chameleon. Yeah. Okay. I'm kind of a chameleon. So where, when I go somewhere, I, I'm really into the, um, yeah, into the, 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 yeah, the mood yeah. of the country, you know, like, so I, I wear the, the same stuff. I mm. like I did the OC cut, I, uh, <laughs> stuff like this. And if I go to Italy or if I go to Japan, I think I will have a different, uh, different style. So yeah. Um, yeah. I'm really yeah. like, when I go somewhere, I like to live the same way as the people who live there fully. Yeah. So yeah, I, uh, I cook a bit. I yeah. order a bit also sometimes because it's, uh, it's important. And if I, if I cook, it's not that I, it takes energy, but... Sometimes you just need a cheat meal once in a while, so yeah. I'm I'm like this. I don't know. Well, we, we asked Bruno about that, and he said um, he asked us a question back. Said, "Do you ever cheat on your girlfriend or cheat on your wife?" <laughs> <laughs> I, because I there's cheat some cheat meals. meals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have cheat meals, so I, I cheat on my life, you know, with uh, with, with myself. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hey, dude, I was excited to talk to you because uh, I, I remember and then I was reflecting on this a bit when you were talking about just like being away from France during the lead up to a home Olympics and some of the pressure, just like everybody drawing on media opportunities and whatever, because mm -hmm. I was in the training group with uh, with Fred and Caesar and Brett Hawk. And when Laura was in uh, Auburn, and so I remember when she was there and like we would have practices where there were strange men like up in the stands and the rafters 
and people would be going like, what's going on? It was only the pro group in their training. And then later we'd find out that there were French paparazzi that were like in town in Alabama, just like tracking our practice because yeah. she was around and that was a whole story. And it was just like, God damn, like yeah. what a life to, to live. Like most, most people uh, like in the swimming world don't think about media that way but when you get to a certain level of achievement especially like you podium at three olympics olympic champion like you know you're a well-known person especially a strapping looking yes, dude like you are i, I mean I, a lot of pressure I, re I, I really believe that it's a so cultural so the mm. worst i think is in, in the south of europe they are like and in, in england uh when you see for example uh no matter if it's swimming or something else but if you read the sun for example uh, about uh, about I don't know if you break up with uh, your girlfriend or if you do something, it's gonna be like straight into it, and they will come into your life, and we don't like that. I think in the U.S. and in Australia, like this kind of country, it's different. You guys respect more uh, the private life. Mm. This is my opinion, maybe not, but uh, <laughs> this is my opinion, and uh, and yeah, they are. They are a bit tough. Uh, there is a story about my sister, by the way, um, during the, the, the Worlds in 2005. Um, mm -hmm. So I was I was watching with my dad. Uh, I was 15, 14 years old at the wow. time. And um, because L'Equipe is the, the, the yeah. sports uh, newspaper, yeah. uh, we have only one. I mean, we we have some, but L'Equipe is, uh, is the one. Yeah, and even I know what L'Equipe have... is. So for that to happen, you know, like it's people know it. Yeah, if you have if if you're French uh, sportsman, if, if you are you are you have bad relationship with the equipe, it's difficult to have a, a good life with sponsor because if they if they tell to the if they if they write that you're shit, you'll be a shit uh, like to the eye uh, in front of the eyes wow. of, of everyone, you know, yeah. wow. which is wrong. But I mean, this is how it is. And um, the story is that they had to uh, to stop uh, the, the the newspaper, you know, like the, the writing. Because of the, the time zone difference, at just the time uh, where uh, my sister was swimming the final, and uh, so she became Olympic champion the, the year before, yeah. and they couldn't write because they had they had to to, to send it to the to the, uh, to the office and, and everything. So they wrote two uh, different article, one saying that uh, amazing, uh, super good job, uh, world champion, uh, stuff like this. Uh -huh. And the other one completely op the opposite because she qualified eight, uh, for the final in, uh, yeah. in, uh, in 2005. Yeah. And the second one, we don't know, but the second one was, so either you're God in France, either yeah. you're something else, not good. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Hey, this is hard. Like the, it's good and sometimes to feel that, okay, you're, you're winning. Like, for example, Leon at the moment is, uh, yeah. is kind of a, a god in France. And yeah. it's good while he's like, keep winning, it's okay. But I remember in 2016 for me, from 100, uh, yeah. because yeah. of Anthony, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was from a god to the guy who couldn't handle pressure and uh, had a bad competition just from one hundredth of a second. Yeah. So um, when you know that, when you're young, it's difficult to uh, to live with that. But now I know a bit more about the press, so I take care. I say what I want to say, and uh, it's also I, I would say your uh, your speech. Like if you say, okay, I'm okay with a, a medal, I'm okay with the final, and if you win. They'll be okay. It's a it's a good job. But if if it, if in France you say okay, I want to win the Olympics, which is normal. I I I will go to Paris. I want to win the Olympics. Maybe I will yeah. not. Like I have more chance to lose than to win. There is only one winner. But if in France you say that you want to win and you don't win, you're like huh, this guy. Like just think he's too good and uh, stuff like. That. So yeah, we have kind of um, not a bad relationship, but sometimes it's uh, it's, it's harder than uh, than all the time. Yeah. So, so Flo, let me just get on a little rave here for a second in case the keep is listening or whoever doesn't know about you and your career. For them to realize that you, not many people have medal in the 50 free in three consecutive Olympics. Gary did it. Popov did not yeah, do it. Yeah, he back to back. Okay. 0 0.01 is nothing. 
Not title. many people have set two world records in one world championships. Not, not many people have made finals consist consistently in a 53 that Gary Hall and we consider the hardest event in swimming because it's the event that allows the least room for error. In hardest event to win and to race. You are, are the legends of the sport and to hell with whatever happens next or what has happened. You know, like people are listening, what you've done, not just in 53, <laughs> 50 breaststroke, we saw at ISL, 50 back world record holder. It's it's incredible. So just heads up there. Um, yeah, did I, you have it made me think about, uh, I saw in, in, on Instagram, uh, Bruno post something, I don't know, a year ago or something. And it was uh, a picture with two books, one like this and one like this. <laughs> yeah. And this, one, and this one was like how to swim, uh, I don't know, uh, 800 yeah. and how to swim a 53. Because you cannot do any mistake. By the way, like in Rio, if you if you analyze the race, you see my breakout. I yeah. take some air on the on the first uh, the first uh, stroke, oh. and I think this is why I lost. There is other uh, so uh, yeah. other other stuff why why I lost. But during the race, like you cannot do any mistake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a crazy thing. With yeah, go ahead, Luke. What were you gonna say? No, I was, I was saying it all happened for a reason. If if you had won that, where would your career be now? Maybe you would have stopped swimming. Maybe not. You know, maybe you wouldn't be standing on the blocks of the final in Paris in a few months' time. You know, it's all that's a matter of the journey, dude. And yeah, you, there's nothing you can do at that point. You can change it. Mm. Um, um, yeah. But I, I and I know you're with you're training alongside Ben often. You're training under James, yeah. who's achieved it himself as a coach and a swimmer. You know, you're making the right decisions. So you, even though there's no room to make mistakes in the race, you're making all the right decisions in training and personal life, which is kudos to you, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's 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 harder. So uh, I, I'm not sure it's only uh, European this this mindset, but let's say the U.S. basketball don't win the Olympics. Yeah, it's yeah, it's kind of a, a drama for you, but. I see, I see things the other way. It's hard to be Olympic champion, even if you, if all, all your your players are playing in the NBA. It's hard. Like it's not because you have been good that you will be good all your life. Like normally, I would say that you're good during like a, one Olympic cycle, maybe one and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and James told me that like back in the days because I was with, working with James when I became Olympic champion in 2012. Mm -hmm. I was 21. I, I achieved my dream. Yeah, and I think in his head, I was, it was like it's going to be difficult for him to be to have motivation to to continue swimming because I was not even French champion. Like my first yeah. title with the uh, with, with the team was a uh, what Olympic champion, okay. and he told me something good. He told me, you know, a real champion don't don't win once; he wins mm -hmm. twice, like three times. I don't know. Okay. And after he he creates a new a new dream. Uh, I put a new dream in my head. Uh, yeah. It was like 30 minutes after the race. Huh? So, wow. Yeah, yeah. He like, he tapped on my shoulder and said, Flo, Flo, okay, you're Olympic champion, but calm. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> For me, a real champion. Yeah, it's kind of a strange, but I think it's because of this speech, this chat we had together, that I achieved more than only one Olympic gold medal, you know. And he told me a real champion is, is someone who wins uh, win a lot of medals, who break records. And and he was like, for you, I think it's good to say that you have to win all the titles. So yeah. the two French titles, of course, short course, long course. Yeah. Europeans, short course, long yeah. course. World, yeah. short course, long course. And mm -hmm. at least one world record. And I achieved this goal um, in Kazan, 2015. Yeah. It was my last title. So I was yeah. I was chasing this one. And yeah. I think that's also why the year after it was more difficult for me because yeah. my dream was not to become two times Olympic champion. When you're a kid, you, you don't think like, okay, I want to, to be good during seven years, eight years. No, you want to, to be Olympic champion or world champion or beat yeah. a world record. Yeah. But when you achieve that, it's more difficult to, to have the motivation to continue the same way, I think. So I respect so much like... Kitajima, Adam Pitti, Michael, mm -hmm. Michael Phelps. Yeah. How is that possible to still be mot motivated after 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 Beijing? Like, especially with that kind of training. 
Yeah. For me, it's like amazing. Like he won eight goals. I, I don't speak about Athens and uh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. and uh, uh, Sydney before. Yeah. Uh, but wow. wow. Yeah. Like so, it's, it's hard to to have the motivation to keep winning. Well, so what's your advice been to Leon then, as he approaches you know what could potentially be a you know, a giant leap for his career commercially uh, or, you know, has the potential risk with all the pressure coming with it too. Uh, what's I'm just curious, has, have you been in touch with him with any wisdom on what your learnings have been? Like for the, for this mindset? Yeah. Just like not only the, not only the repeat uh, mindset about like, Hey, if you win once, like the true test of a champion is, can you continue on and have, have longevity and, and do, and do it again. But like also just the, some of the things you mentioned earlier around pressure and, so, you know, cause yeah, he's coming into the spotlight and you were, as you mentioned, like somewhat under the radar, not even French champion to win. Yeah. I would say that until you achieve your dream, who is, Difficult because basically everyone wants to be Olympic champion if you're a swimmer and if you're in the Olympics. And I would say that you're not yourself until you win your first medal, no, your first title, because you put everything together to have uh, to, to to make this dream come true. Mm -hmm. And after, when you realize that, you you are like um, like me or like uh, Caleb. You start to be yeah. like, I'm not really happy about like the life I'm having. Like, mm -hmm. it's cool to win, but I think that the journey is much more important. So, mm -hmm. you, I would say that you, the target is to be more connected to your to yourself, uh, and not be like, okay, the, the people are doing that to to be good. I'm gonna do the same. You have to be more connected, and I see that in Cameron McEvoy. I see mm -hmm. that in Anthony mm -hmm. Irving, especially mm -hmm. the sprinter, because it's easier to mm -hmm. to travel, to go in the sun like I'm, I'm doing now, to work mm -hmm. without uh, without a mate because I'm doing I don't know like this morning I did three point five you know I'm not doing eight k session so it's easier, and uh, and yeah I'm also like yeah I'm with my friend and I know it can be strange for uh, for for some people but I want to do exactly uh, what I need and I I listen my needs. Uh, much more than before. Before I was like, okay, the plan is that, I'm going to do that. Now I'm like, do I really want to do that? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And when you see Cameron McEvoy who, who won the, the Worlds last year, like, I don't know, he did maximum 10K a week, something like this, even less, I would say. So he completely believed in what he was doing mm -hmm. and it happened like, so... I think everyone should um, should think this way. But normally, if you if you didn't win, you're like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna follow the plan because most of the time the people are, do, are, are doing that, so I'm, I'm not gonna take some risk and I'm not gonna believe something different, a different way of, of uh, working. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think the goal is to enjoy the journey much more than the um, than the day you will swim, and it's super hard. It's super hard, but you need to have experience, I think, to 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 be really believe and to be confident about it. Yeah, well said, and we fully believe in Baku. Um, Brian was 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 um, bringing up the fact that you are one of these swimmers over the career that the oh, Gary definitely was a swimmer who would disappear, and he would show up for the big, the important meets and win. Right back in his career, Kevin Jones too, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Kevin Jones is good only the Olympic year. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, we trained together in 2012 actually yeah with with yeah. colin it was it was incredible he and, and truly even throughout that training camp he and throughout the like eight months leading up to the olympics he was yeah, you just on. Switched on. yeah. yeah he was you he just was maybe at practice he's maybe there like 60 percent of the time and then by the end he was there all the time and dialed <laughs> so it was wild yeah but but you seem to have a similar idea, Flo. I mean, at the prime of your youth career, when the best swimmers in the world were at Auburn or Arizona, of Roland, Cesar, Fred, you, from what I read, you didn't you didn't swim. You 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 did you stop swimming for a bit, and then you came back in 2011, and you're like, oh hi, I want to win gold out of lane seven, and then you go to Rio after destroying every single, filling all your rules, and you stop swimming for two years to play handball, which is a fantastic sport, and then you come True. back 
Three? Three, three years. years. <laughs> so you stop for three years from perfecting the craft of the sport, of the race that you can't make mistakes, playing this game, which is fantastic, and then you win another medal. And now you're down there secretly training with Cam McAvoy. You heard it first. No, <laughs> secretly. <laughs> you're, down, you're down in Brisbane doing some quiet work. Talked about that. I mean, it, that, that, that time to get away. And, and most people think you can't take a break from swimming. You have to, you have to grind. But this is, yeah. yeah. Many of the time, most of the time, sorry. Um, this is what people think. But yeah. I stopped for three years. I was still active. I was playing handball. Uh, I would say between six and, and eight training a week plus the gym. Wow. So I think I had a, a better eye roll. Like my heart was better because I had to, to play for 60 minutes because it's two times 30 minutes. And I did a, and I did a, a competition like with the club like to help them, which we called like Interclub. We are 10, kind of ISL, but with the, the French, uh, only, only French people. Uh-huh. And I swam... 20, uh, it's short course, huh? I swam 20.72. I yeah. didn't swim for, for two and a half years. So I was like, huh, maybe, I, maybe I can come back, you know? Because I was enjoying my life. Uh, it was, of course, a 53 short course relay takeover. Yeah. But I was like, okay, I, I, I still have it. And I was not excited, excited to continue in 2016 because I learned everything. I had everything. But now, uh, in 2019, when I came back, I mean, I texted James. I texted James in 18, and I told him, "What do you think about me coming back?" <laughs> and uh, he told me, "Okay, we have this. We train in Gloria, and uh, uh, I, I think it can be good. We change a bit the, the, the way of training because I'm a good swimmer. I can I can swim like long, but I didn't want to to swim too long. You know, I wanted to enjoy and." Uh, and even in 2019, it was a bit more than now. Like, and you, you, had to, you had to swim more. So I, I told James, okay, I'm, I'm going to come back. I'm going to follow your plan. But we need to have some chat because I don't want to do more than 3K. Uh, because I think I don't need. And if I over-focus during 3K, it's much better than focusing 50% during 6K. For me, I, I prefer to spend one hour in the pool and be focused for one hour. I mean, when, I, when, when I'm focused... Uh, when I jump in, I think about like how I how I pull the first stroke. I'm not like I'm doing also uh, yeah, yeah, some yeah. Shit, shit backstroke. James uh, called that shit backstroke, you know, <laughs> when you pull on the leg rope. And <laughs> but but when I when I, when I swim freestyle, I'm I'm like this. And uh, there is a lot of story. Like for example, Caleb will yeah. be for yeah. me super dangerous. We speak about Cameron. We speak about Ben. Yeah. But I know. Yeah. I've been being there. quiet. Yeah. No, he's like he's quiet. Uh, yeah. He work. He works. Sorry, and uh, he would be there. Like, of course, of course, of course, that's normal. He was a good swimmer. He cannot be like a bad swimmer just because he stopped for one year. Right. It's not possible. Yeah. Anthony Irvine, uh, me, uh, Cameron McEvoy. How many examples we have? It's specific to the 53, maybe the 100, but uh, but we can come back and we are more, these people I, I, I speak about are more, and myself included, we are more challenged people. I like the challenge. Mm. I, I, of course, I, I would love to win, but I want to win my challenge before I want to win the Olympics. I did already. Huh. I did. So it's it's not the same. It's the same if I say, okay, uh, when I stop swimming, I want I want to bench press 200 kilos. This is going to be my challenge, maybe. And uh, I will put like everything together to have this challenge done. And now it's the same. It's not, okay, I want to win the Olympics. To win the Olympics, I did already. This is really yeah. the challenge for me. All right, I flew. You, you, you set up this next segment. So in, in my office, I've got a pull-up bar. Okay, yeah. and, and I, I want to talk about power and strength in in in, in sprinting. So um, we did uh, Nathan. Nathan can dumbbell bench press between 100 to 150 pounds each. He can do pull ups of 135 pounds. Um, we Cam. Cam doesn't lift the heavy weights as much, but he has the extraordinary core strength. Right. The core um, is the core is yeah, amazing. Core. It's a gymnast. Uh, it's yeah, a gymnast. yeah. I'm, uh, and back in the days, I remember when uh, Freddy Bousquet. Swam yeah. 21.3. Uh-huh. He had like the perfect core. 
for me, and this is my opinion, he was good in the gym, but yeah. the most important, you can you can bench press like 200 kilos, but if you don't have the connection like between the, the up and the down, and uh, it's not gonna work. So yeah. But but Ben Proud says that you you can beat him in an arm wrestle, no problem. I just saw you do a power rack butterfly with 70, 73 kilos. Um, yeah, we 70. had Minikov on. Minikov was on our show just last week. Minikov says, I don't lift weights. I'm not a power flyer. I, I just swim on top of the water. Talk to me about that whole balance of power and strength. How freaking strong are you? And how do you relate that to the water without getting injured? You know? I think uh, I'm lucky because uh, I listen to my body. So if if I feel that I have a small, small pain, I'll stop. I'll stop for two days, three days, and I will come back instead of going to the physio and uh, having massage and, uh, and therapy and still swimming with the power rack. I think it's not smart to do that. I prefer to stop two, three days, and this pain will be silent, and after I will, I will go back to the um, to the pool. But... I think it's uh, it's important to find the way. Uh, it's it's important to find the specific way of working for yourself. Mm -hmm. So I know the first time I went into the gym, I bench pressed 100 kilos when I was 17 years old. So of course I'm I'm powerful. So uh, I don't know in lips, but maybe it's a two yeah. two twenty something. Yeah, like yeah. This. yeah. And uh, I was like, okay, I'm a powerful uh, human. I'm not. I'm not even speaking about the swimmer. I'm, I'm. I have strength. I'm good at it. And and Brett said to. So I mix a lot of stuff, but uh, Brett said to uh, to to Freddy Busquet mm -hmm. uh, to work more on the um, on the good parts. On the I don't know how to say that in English. Strength so, uh, more. Well, yeah, more on the strength than the weakness. Because mm. if you focus on the strength, like, it's good. If you focus on the weakness and you're like, I'm a bad swimmer, I have a bad core, uh, I don't know, I'm, uh, my heart is not as good as, uh, as before. And you, you focus on something negative. And I think when Brett said that to, uh, to Fred, and Fred told me that, like, years after, I was like, I completely understand and I want to, to, to work this way because mm. when you're on the blocks, especially for the 53, you need yeah. confidence. And if you think, like, my underwater are not that good. I hope uh, we not uh, I will not be too far of uh, of Caleb uh, because he's super good. Then you focus on something negative, so it's not super good. So I choose to to be focused on my strength. Um, still, of course, uh, I, I'll do. I will work on my weakness, but mm -hmm. my main set are with my my strength. So yeah, seventy kilo uh, seventy kilos are not that much for me. <laughs> because I can, uh, I don't know, last, uh, when was it? Last Friday, I was uh, doing a um, uh, bench press with the dumbbell. But, you know, I, I had to move, like, uh, my legs or so down. Uh -huh. uh, so I was kind of, I don't know if I can show you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're, you're like planking. Like and I, and I, had, I had to do this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know? Okay. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I have, uh, I have the dumbbell. Uh, I had to increase, so I did this session the, 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 the Friday, like a week before, and I did 30, 35, 40 kilos, 10 reps, you know, five uh, right arm, five left arms. And my, uh, my gym coach told me, okay, you need to increase the weight. And in the gym, I didn't see, but we didn't have the 45. So I did 35, 40, and 50. <laughs> and I know that when I talk with the swimmers about that, they tell me that. How can you bench bench press with a dumbbell with a movement on the core? Yeah. Like with 50 kilo. I'm like, I don't know, I'm just I'm just strong and you don't have to reach this because if you're better better than me in the core or with the catch, I I remember like so much when I was doing gym in Gloria, Chad Leclos was not able to lift 70 kilo in the bench press. Yeah. But he still swim like uh 21 9 in short course in uh, in fly, so faster right. than me. Yeah. Uh, Forty-eight, uh, four, I think, in uh, in, uh, in the hundred. Uh -huh. So you need to to be good at uh, at what you I don't know your, your strength. It doesn't doesn't have to to have like a certain way of uh, of working. Like we are all different. We have different mobility. We have a different uh, strength. We have a different uh, heart. And uh, yeah, you have yeah. to find a way. What I work power a lot. 
What are some of the things that you know about yourself now? I mean, you mentioned the importance of strength, but I just think about like, for example, I, I love competing in triathlon in my life post swimming. And one of the things that I've learned there is about like how to manage my nutrition program. I know I need a lot more sodium and I know at what point I need to intake sodium and carbs throughout races to finish them really well. And like, that's something that is built over time. Like I needed to fail a bunch of times uh, mm -hmm. and not have good success with nutrition until, until I could figure out, okay, I need to keep increasing, increasing, increasing. So now that I know the formula and that couldn't have happened without that experience, but I think in like for someone with the longevity that you've had, the breaks that you've taken and come back to the sport. Now you're talking about like the adaptations to your training program, but like, you know, having some independence, but James is still involved, right? It's like, you must know really well, intuitively what your body needs and, you know, how to kind of dial it in. So I'm just curious, like, what are, what are some of the things that you're making sure are part of this program that like you, you must do them uh, to, in order to be able to have success? I can, I can, I can tell you like the way I, I saw my, uh, my Olympic year, my last Olympic year, this one, uh -huh. because this is very different and uh, people would be shocked, I think, but this is the best way for me because I can overfocus. So in uh -huh. September, I mm -hmm. was like, okay, now, if I start now to work to work well and to eat well, sleep well and everything, I don't want to be like in May or April where it's too much for me. Like Because I'm this kind of human where I need a lot of social life outside the pool. And uh, if, I don't, uh, if, I, if I don't have that, if, I think especially now because I'm 33 and I achieved my goals, so it's different, but I always have been like this. Uh, by the way, Rom, uh, Romain Barnier was working a way uh, with me, a different way uh, to the other, the other swimmers. I will explain that. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to to work and to have the good mindset when I put myself in the plane to Australia. So for me, the 5th of uh, January, my Olympic prep starts. starts. And before that, I just wanted to enjoy my life. So James told me, he, he, know, he knows me really well and he, he trusts me. So this is honestly super good. And I, I'm really like uh, super happy about, about that because he knows me that well. But during the, this period, September to, to 5th of January, I think I swam uh, maximum 5, 10K a week. I party every weekend. <laughs> No, but this is this is me, yeah. you know. Like, yeah. and I, I can I can say it because it was hard to to go to the, to the Europeans yeah. because I was completely aligned with myself. Uh, I wanted to have a big part of social life because I knew that from January to August it would be completely different, and I would need to be only a sportsman. Like, for example, I'm in Australia now, so. I don't want to party. I don't want to to yeah. have a, 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 a big social life. I don't and I don't need it. It's not that I just don't want. It's I don't need it because during three four months I did a lot of uh, of this part. So I decided to to do that. Uh, and people <laughs> around me uh, told me. No, I mean people not in my first uh, circle, but my second, my third told me. Are you sure that you're preparing Olympics? Are you sure that this yeah. is good for you? And for me, this is kind of an insult to me because I'm like, guys, I'm 33 years old. I know what I need and I, I know what I want. And yeah. even if it didn't work, I, I want to enjoy the journey more. So yeah. on the 5th of January, I will work. And now it's easy to say because all these people who told me, are you sure uh, you're not going to perform at the Olympics because you don't, uh, you don't, swim, you don't swim enough and, uh, and stuff, you party too much and you don't eat well. Now they, they are kind of silent because they see that I'm working well and I'm, I'm just following my, my old plan. Like, yeah. I, don't, I, will not, I will not cheat with myself. Like, I did that because I wanted to, but when I, when I, um, when I, when I, when I start, I start, like, I restart. Yeah. I'm 150% 100, 100, focused. So I, I, I came from 50% to 150%, but I have more than, more than enough time to, to, to be good because... Now, uh, it's like the U.S. and uh, Australia for us, uh, the trials are in June. Uh -huh. So I have six months 
to perform uh, on a 53, which I think I know the distance. <laughs> uh, I don't need a lot of uh, uh, aero work, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I know that when I will come back to, uh, from Australia, I will already uh, will already be kind of ready mm-hmm. to race fast. I hope, <laughs> I really hope. But um, but yeah, that's why when I when I got the medal in um, in the the European short course, short course yeah. yeah, people people were like people who knew that I was I was partying every weekend were like, wow, how is that possible? Because yeah. I was enjoying my life. Yeah, and there is like I. Last year, I mean, 2022, I did everything well from September to December, and we had the the, the Melbourne uh, World Short Course. And I I finished this competition. I did 21 uh, 2091, I think, yeah. uh, six six or seven. This year, from September to December, I think if I did 20 or 30 percent of the work I did the year before, it's a lot, and I swam faster. <laughs> so, of course, twenty twenty point seven for me is not uh, is not a good time because I swam twenty point two. But it was enough for me to get a medal. It was enough to 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 still be like motivated and uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. This is all year, all year. All right. So take us to uh, early August. <laughs> I know this is a this is a very strange speech for someone. No, no, who, no, no. Who prepared for no. the Olympics? But for me, like to be aligned with yourself. And to believe in what you do is the most important thing. 100%. Yeah. Well, I think that's the, you mentioned somebody like, you know, you brought up Colin earlier and um, uh, Luke mentioned Gary Hall, like people that have uh, an internal plan and you're in control of that. Ultimately, uh, you know, being able to command your plan is what leads you to have confidence behind the blocks. Yeah. This is like, the, the what you say you are when you are in control of what you do this is where you uh, this is when you perform for me yeah yep. 453 flow yep. a, a, a quick insert here again george ravel his last race rio olympic games his fifth olympics he didn't get out at prelims he had a terrible fifth uh, lane eight so i meet him afterwards i feel so bad george is standing there smiling so happy so content he is He's at peace. He's happy. He's had a shittiest race of his career almost. Because yeah. that's okay. He's not defined by that. He's defined by no. his journey when he was on. Yeah, yeah. people think that uh, you're defined by what you do, but what you do is not what you are. So in life in general, and not not only like uh, it's not the swimming, it's not the sport. Like, And when you achieve good stuff, when you kind of uh, famous... People see the swimmer, mm-hmm. and I, I don't like that because I'm a swimmer. Like, of course, I, I've been a swimmer, and it bring bring me like a lot of good stuff in my life. And now I'm like this because of the swimming. But it doesn't mean that swimming in my swimming is my life. No, I swim like I swam this morning from uh, <clears throat> from eight thirty to nine thirty, and this afternoon I swim from five to uh, to six thirty. Okay, so it's a uh, Two, 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 two hours and a half on 24 hours. How can you yeah. find someone yeah. like, like like that just for two and a half hours? It's like, <clears throat> I'm not only a swimmer. I can, I love to play guitar. I love to ride motorbike. I love to, I love, um, <clears throat> I have a, a telescope. So mm. of course I'm not only that. I, and I think for me, it's sad if uh, you are only one thing in your life. You need to be yeah. open mind, like yeah. to, to be, um, how do you say that? Um, uh, I've lost the, the word. Anyway, you have to you have to see things. You have to to travel and, uh, and stuff like this. You cannot be defined only with one thing in your life. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. Well, what's it um what's it what's it like to party with Flo Manadou? Then let's take us there. What's happening in like August post post Olympics in Paris? You've had a few post Olympic <laughs> parties. Are you up on the? Are you popping bottles and spraying champagne everywhere? What are you doing? What what's the music that hits for you? What do you like listening to? I think I cannot speak about partying uh, that's gonna come because sure it, it will depend on my mindset. It's gonna be <laughs> home Olympics, so I, I never I, I never like been into home Olympics. <laughs> Maybe it's gonna be the end of my career. I mean, it's gonna be for sure. I'm, I don't like to say for sure, but yeah. in Los Angeles I will be 37, so I think I want to do something else. But probably my last Olympics, home Olympics, 
it depends if I if I have a good result. So, but it's gonna be sick, honestly. <laughs> <It's gonna be sick. laughs> so, I remember when I qualified for my first Olympic. So it was in uh, Dunkerque, like in the north of France. We had the, the trials. Yeah. And 50% of me was happy to go to the Olympics, and 50% of me was happy to go to the Olympics to party, <laughs> because all the the elders they, they they told me, you have no idea. We cannot explain. Uh, it's a week of, uh, yeah. of uh, crazy parties and and everyone like worked for four years and every uh, every swimmer and uh, even like uh, the judo and uh, the fencing, for example. And in the same time, they stop. They did something good or bad, but there is one thing they want to party because, you know. And we understand each other like so so well. When uh, when we party, swimmers uh, like and, and, and people who had the who had the same life for the, the last four years. Yeah. Flo, it was the Rio Olympic Games. I was at the European party because I had American party and a European party. So I'm on the rooftop at Copacabana. It was the best it, it was, was, it, it was amazing. And I looked around. Yeah. Right, I, I was hanging out with Ben Proud's brother actually and Ruta. And I remember looking around like these Hungarian swimmers. They they, they haven't had a drip of alcohol in four years. This is the first night they're going out. This place yeah. went crazy. I was like, I have to leave now. This is crazy. It's yeah. really good. Yeah. I, I, I got to get party, there. At yeah. that party, I, I saw like, uh, because I'm, I'm a big fan, I'm a big, big uh, sports fan. And I saw... Uh, Ronaldo. Gustavo, Gustavo Cuarte and Ronaldo. And one yeah. thing, like... Yeah. Uh, Michael Johnson. Yes. Tracker yeah. Field. Came yeah. to me. And and told me, can we have a picture? I was like, no what? way! <laughs> what? I was like, no, can I have a picture? You know? And I was like, wow, I'm part of this world now. Yeah. I was like, wow, that's it was amazing. You know? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, like Michael Johnson, I was uh, six years old, and I was, yeah. I was like, uh, I was following the Olympics in Atlanta, and um, he was running like this, you know. So it was yeah, yeah, really yeah. easy to to see him and. When he told me, can I have a picture with you? I was like, wow, this is a dream, you know? That's so crazy. Well, yeah. uh, speaking of, speaking of uh, Paris and like what's uh, happening at the Olympics, um, I'm going to I'm gonna be there. So I don't know if I'll be able to catch like that much of the swimming, but I'm running the Paris Marathon, which is the same day. It's actually run at night between the women's and men's marathon. That's like August 10th or so. So it's like toward the later part of the games. Um, yeah. But I'm excited to see. Yeah, I haven't like been to the Olympics since I was a kid. I, the Atlanta Games are in my hometown, so I'm curious to know, like, okay, what are what are some of the things that you, as a elite swimmer, but you like know a bunch of athletes in other sports? Are there are there any other sports? I mean, handball is obviously a key one. What other sports mm -hmm. or what other athletes are going to be at this Olympic Games that you you'd be like stoked to see um that you think are just going to be put on put on a hell of a show and be fun to watch french you you speak about french athlete or uh, yeah well, whoever i don't know it doesn't have to be i think um uh, in france normally we have a lot of medals in fencing judo um and i think the the crowd will be uh will be super good in, the, in these sports huh. and fencing uh, uh, mm. the, the thing that I like about the, the, the Paris Olympic is that they used the monuments, uh, yeah. the Grand Palais, uh, the Eiffel Tower, and they will, for example, the beach volley will be under the, the, the Eiffel Tower, not under, under, but yeah. near to the Eiffel Tower. And for me, this is not necessarily the, the sport that you have to follow, but also like you have to leave the, um, the full, uh, the full experience with, uh, with Paris. Paris for me is the most beautiful city in, in the world. I will never live in Paris. <laughs> because I want to, to to keep that in mind, and I don't want to be stressed by the, by the city. But when you walk in, in Paris, it's kind of a, a museum, you know. But even in the street, like, so seeing like maybe someone winning under the Eiffel Tower or fencing in the Grand Palais, like the architecture is crazy, and uh, and yeah. But I would say judo, uh, I would say fencing. I don't know where the horse riding is. I'm not a big fan of horse riding, but uh, it can be can be cool. And maybe the new sport like uh, breakdance, probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, be cool. Uh, uh, if you want to see the surf, it's gonna be hard because it's gonna be in, uh, in Tahiti. 
And ciao. Yeah. Super far. So you have to choose. But uh, yeah, if if it's if it's only Paris, yes, I, I will choose us, uh, the sport, but also where the sports uh, are are playing. Well, Flo, after one of your rare nights out partying in Paris, did you ever swim in the Seine? And if so, what advice do you have for the, those athletes who have to swim in the Seine? To swim in the in the sun. In the Seine, in the River Seine, the, the, the open water race is ah, okay. uh, the athletes there. Have you ever swum in the Seine yourself after a night no. out? <laughs> and what advice do you have? <laughs> Sounds terrible. <laughs> no, no, but uh, I think uh, for the open water, it's going to be a bit more uh, clear. So normally the, the water will be okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> so it's good. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't really... When I was a kid, I was jumping in the river uh, because I was living in the countryside, but maybe if we, drunk, if we are drunk, if we are drunk, we have to be careful not to jump in the, in the sand. Yeah. We do dumb stuff when we're drinking afterwards at 3 a.m. for sure. Everyone, everyone. Everyone, you get injured. A bit less, a bit less when you're 33 now uh, because you're, you're, you're a bit smart. I mean, you're smarter. Uh, but when you're 20, if you're, it's uh, your, your first Olympics, especially home Olympics, you can be cra- you, you can do crazy stuff. So um, let's see. When you're 33, your body can't do the stuff you did when you're 18. I, well, I, I remember I going, to, going to a disco with Dewey Jagania and um and 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 in San Francisco, and it's 3 a.m. and we're trying to get home to Berkeley, and Dewey is doing leapfrogs over parking meters. A parking meter is this high. And he's just doing leapfrogs over it like nobody's business. Boom, 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 boom. That's like I, I just can't... remember, like for me, the, the, the most crazy people in, in parties are the Australian. <laughs> I did some party with the Australian, and I remember it was not during uh, an important competition, but we went to uh, to Brazil uh, to a competition called Raya Rapida. It was kind of uh, something for fun, and the team was. Uh, I don't know all of them, but I remember Matt Target. Yeah. And I was like, this guy, he was he was strong, you know, and he was jumping, climbing in the trees. And I was like, calm down, calm down. I mean, I didn't I didn't say calm down because he was 10 years uh, older than me, but in my head I was like, why? Why you have to do so many crazy so, so many crazy stuff, you know? And uh and yeah, and I, I've been partying with uh, some Australians. And I know that when they party, they party a lot and they drink a lot, yeah. so they can... Uh, Flo, my they first Olympic game. Can... It was Sydney Olympics 2000, right in Australia. This is my brother starting. So I went to see my brother's room and he looks just like me. So he would go into the athlete's party and then he would take his badge and give it to me. And I'm in the athlete's party partying. So I got a party on Bondi Beach. It was... I was 21 years old. I was sure. It was crazy. <laughs> These yeah. Australians, you're right. So, anyway, Brian, yeah, they're, crazy. they're crazy. They're crazy. So, we had a few audience questions that we wanted to ask you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we'll start off with uh, Zach Swimsta wants to know why do you get no arm drive from your dive? Huh? I have no idea. Um, I, I, I started to, to, to dive like this and. Uh, I think you. I did some. Yeah, I did some uh, some research. I mean, not me, but in France, we we have a, a guy who did some research, and you can be more a, a front person or a back person. Uh-huh. And for me, for me, when you pull back, and if I do that, I'm kind of lost in the water. If I hold my hands like this, I use the the grip here, and it ha- it helped me to to go over, you know, like to go over my hands and to use my core. I cannot use my core if I don't have this grip and if I don't have my my my, my hands together. Yep. So I think, and it was automatic and it was when I was 16 or 17, I was feeling like good like this. And back in the days when I was 17, we didn't have the, the blocks because I'm a bit old now. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> sorry. So yeah, uh, I didn't choose. I think uh, this side chose me, sure. and uh, I I tried uh, to to change and to see if it was better for me to to pull more on the on my arms, and uh, I was slower and I was so lost in the air. So yeah, yep, yep. All right, and this one's from Archer Soulfit wants to know your next tattoo. Uh, what's your next tattoo, and also what's your favorite tattoo and its meaning? 
Look, I have, so it's in French, but I have a list. Oh, you got oh, a, you have a I, list. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> because when you're a streamer, okay. You know, for example, when I, when I, when I spoke about the, 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 the four months uh, between September and December, yeah. I did 10 tattoos, which is normally you don't do that when you're a streamer because you cannot go in the pool. And, uh, yeah. But I was like, okay, I want, I want to have a tattoo. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a tattoo. And so I have a list here. I love well, it. You see, and the red are the one I didn't do. So, uh, for the listeners, the he's next... got a list of probably like 25 different tattoos on there. <laughs> now I have, uh, so the, the, the last one I did, uh, was the 21 on my, uh, on my foot because it was my 20, my, my, my 21st tattoo. And, uh, the 21 was the number of uh, the favorite number of my, uh, my coach who coached me in, uh, in Antibes. Uh, and 21 is also, uh, I became an Olympic champion when I was 21, 21 mm -hmm. seconds to 53. Mm -hmm. I had, um, I had a, a medal, uh, in 2021. So a lot of mm -hmm. meanings, but I was like, okay, the, his name is Quentin. And mm -hmm. I was like, I want you, I want you to tattoo the 21 on my, on my foot. So we, uh, we did that and I think it's on, it's on Instagram. So I tattooed 21 on his foot and he tattooed 21 on my foot. Oh. But the next one will be probably, um, expect the unexpected. Yeah. That's hard. Because in life, this is kind of my mindset. So on me, it's either, uh, I don't have a lot of motivation quotes, you know, it's more like uh, personal. So I belong deeply to myself. This is really French. Rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> this one, don't don't do it. But uh, the don't is like with uh, uh -huh. a. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so it's either that or either uh, beautiful stuff uh, like uh, whoop, this one is La Vie est Belle. Life is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So remember, this one, for example, was um, to help me. Uh, to help me in the moment of my life where I was like, my, my life was a bit sad. And I was like, remember that life is not sweet every day, but life is beautiful overall. Uh, and I also like love, live in love and, uh, and stuff like this. But the next one would be expect the unexpected or, uh, nice. or I don't know how to say that in English. Artichok? Yeah, artichok. No. yeah, yeah, artichok. Yeah. Maybe that because in, I don't know it's in in in, uh, in English it's the same. But when you are, you say that you have your heart uh, like an artichoke, is like you are kind of sweet and uh, and then like this. So maybe uh, an artichoke. Flo, every summer when they get when they make the Olymp when they not just make the Olympic team when they swim the Olympics they get the Olympic rings. Did you get Olympic rings? And how do you feel about swimmers who get an Olympic rings tattoo, but are not Olympians? Uh, I I didn't so. Did I you think, get Olympic rings? Yeah. No, no, no. Huh? No, because for me, my goal was not to go to the Olympics. Yeah. My goal, my goal was to win the Olympics, mm -hmm. and I think um, I'm also very different. Uh, so I didn't want to do the same as uh, people, mm -hmm. and but I didn't think that way. I was like, I never, I never like. I was never okay. I'm gonna to tattoo the Olympic ring, and maybe I will do something uh, about my career. But for me, if it's a uh, if it's a small uh, small tattoo with Olympic rings for yourself, it's okay. Yeah. But if if you have a big Olympic ring, like uh, let's say here, it's like, yeah. hey, look, I did the Olympics. Yeah. I'm not like this. I did the Olympics. I know that I did the Olympics. I achieved my goals, yeah. but I don't I don't need to show people that I did the Olympics. So. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and uh, and most of my sister, my sister uh, doesn't have the Olympic rings too, and she she has she has a lot of uh, of tattoo. So yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Either you do it when you're super young and uh, and you do your first Olympics and uh, yeah. it's important yeah, yeah, yeah. for you. But after my first Olympic, I was Olympic champion. So this is more than Olympic rings, you know, for me. Yeah, I love it. All right, Flo, we got a few rapid fire, and we'll let you go. What's the hardest race in swimming? For me? Yeah. To do or? <laughs> yeah. In general. Yeah. 400 medley. Oof. 
So brutal. Yes, we'll, leave that, we'll leave that to lay on. All right. Well, let's... Nation now because you're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> He's putting that out of reach. All right. Olympic gold or world record? Olympic gold. Do you pee in the pool? Yeah. Who would win in an arm wrestling match, you or Adam Peaty? Ah, I'm confident in myself. Let's try. <laughs> and uh, Ben just laid down and died with this question, but who would win in an arm wrestling match between you and Ben Proud? I've seen Ben Proud in the gym, so I know that I can lift more. And <laughs> but, probably, so, but now he, he beat me by uh, more than half a second in the last year pants, so... Uh, I think I can beat him uh, with that, but I'm I'm not sure. Like it's all about the technique, so I'm stronger yeah. than him in the gym. But it's not all about the gym, so I don't yeah. know. But, <laughs> sure. Because he is, he is strong. He is strong. Yeah. All right. This one got submitted to us from uh, Instagram. This is from uh, Yanitsa Karlova. Says, uh, "What's one really hard set that you'll remember for a long time? What's the hardest thing you've ever done training?" <laughs> It depends because when I was a kid, uh, my brother was my uh, my coach, mm -hmm. and we did like uh, I don't know uh, ten times four hundred flying. <sighs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not That's even not doing swimming. that. Uh, I'm not even swimming fly without fins now. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's more difficult. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this. But I would say um, we had a set. I, I hate I hate the kick sets, and we had a set in 2012 January 2012. And it was uh, X times 100 kick. And the start time was like two minutes, 158, 156, 154, descent like this. And you had to hold until you couldn't like swim. And this, this was difficult because I like to know how many, how many reps I have to do because I can manage my, my effort, you know? If I don't know, it's harder. And especially in kick, because it's super long for me, and I'm, I'm a big dude. And uh, yeah, yeah, I was I was talking about that uh, with my friend who uh, who is with me now because uh, he did this set with me um, in January 2012. Uh, 2012, sorry. Yeah, you know, who's sneakily a really good kicker too is Freddie Biscay. Very good yeah. with kickboard. Yeah, yeah. But for me, for me, uh, in my career, I've seen that the big guys are not super good in kicking. Huh. Because honestly, uh, I'm I'm 47 at my uh, my feet. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, 13. I think uh, yeah. in the US. Yeah. But still, uh, with uh, 13, I have to uh, to move forward uh, 105 kilos. It's uh, difficult. <laughs> That's not yeah, that big. Well, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a 48. Um, all right. Uh, last last couple here. What's uh, one brand or sponsor uh, that you'd, you'd love to have? Like, what's a what's a product or a brand that you'd love? That you're not partnered with, but that would be awesome. I will, I will show you two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Heads up, marketing yeah. folks! Oh, I'm just excited. I'm gonna I'm gonna laugh if he comes on screen with a Lamborghini. Oh, oh really? No hey. way! Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, no, no, no. It's it's not uh, it's not the same. But from uh, from 2012 to 2016, I think I was drinking. Um, how many cups a day? Two, two, two liters a day. <laughs> two liters a day. <laughs> so for me, <laughs> for me, it's like I think Coke is a uh, yeah, Coca Cola. Like it. So, so that's what your friends meant when they're like, "When are you going to take it serious and train, Flo?" <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's part of it. But if it was just the Coca Cola, it would be okay. But uh, so uh, it's I drink pizza and burgers and. Uh, but at the end of my career, I'll be like, I enjoy my career. I yeah. I perform, yeah. Yeah. and uh, I choose good stuff for me, and not uh, good stuff for for some someone else. So, so I don't care. Yeah. And I think All it's right, gonna well, help you. I was gonna help you when you retire, because a lot of people retire and they don't know what to do with themselves, because they can't. They're not defined, or they had trauma and yeah. they didn't enjoy themselves, and they have they don't know what to do afterwards. So kudos. All right, last uh, one. Go off and, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I think I'm going to enjoy my uh, my post career because first of all I stopped uh, for three years, yeah. so this is when I understood why I was swimming. Because mm -hmm. when you when you start swimming, you're like 
you're good and you became you you become uh, better and better and you have more friends and then you have a bit of money and you know it's like automatic you go to the pool and you go to the next season because you were you were good and and when i stopped I was like okay i'm going to stop i'm going to do handball because i i like to play handball i'm going to do different <laughs> stuff uh, acting uh, playing guitar and in 2019 i was like i want to go back to swimming because because I want, not because it's automatic. And this is when like it all changed and my mindset completely changed. And I think you can see, especially when I walk uh, on the deck before the race, if you look all the races uh, between 12 and, uh, and 16, and the races from 19 to now, now I have, this, I have a big smile on my face, which is like super important. And this is the, I have, I have a story to, to, end, uh, to end this. Uh, Romain Barnier and James Gibson were they, 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 they coached me for the 2012 Olympics. So I was a kid. I was not French champion. I moved to Marseille uh, a year and a half before. So I didn't know them uh, as much as now. And I qualified for the final. So I was super happy because uh, for me it was hard to... Uh, I had the feeling I stole the, the spot of Fred Bousquet because he was third. Uh, fourth. At the, at the trials, he was yeah. my brother-in-law at that time, yeah. and I had to beat, uh, I had to be top two, and uh, in the final it was like Alain Bernard, Am Amaury Levo, Fred Bousquet, Fabien Gillot. They all got medal in the 53, like Europeans were in the Olympics, uh -huh. and I swam uh, 22, I would say 22 12, I think in the heats. <coughs> uh, my best time was 21 87, 86. Uh, so I was like, oh no, like Fred, uh, he swam two years before, 21-3 uh, in, uh, in Budapest. Huh? Yeah. So I was like, oh my God, like I'm, I'm doing his dream, you know, like uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't feel confident with, uh, with this. And then in the semi-final, I did 21-80. So I was like, Flo, you are in the Olympic final, you deserve your spots. Uh, it's good. And the next day... Um, I went like, okay, I'm going to the Olympic final. I'm going to try to have a medal. I'm going to try to win. But you always go to a final. Uh, even if you're in eight, you want to win. But I was like, I would be very happy to have a medal. And I do, I do my, uh, my uh, pre-pool uh, warm-up. I, I, I warm up in the pool and I go to the, to the call room. And just before I go to the call room, Romain and, uh, and James uh, told me, uh, remember to smile, huh? I was like, what? I go to the Olympic final and you tell you you you, you guys you, you tell me to smile. And, and I think this was this was the best advice before the Olympic final that I could have because if you look at this final, I'm the only one relaxed yeah. before the final. Yeah. yeah. There is some some other stuff. I'm a good swimmer, it's not yeah. only because I'm relaxed, but yeah. but sprinting is that. And usually it was the same in 2021. I was in the call room, so of course I was much more confident than in 2012 because uh, because I knew that I could uh, swim fast. And I look at the guys, the seven guys with me, and I was like, in the seven guys, not even one got a medal in uh, 53 at the Olympics. I got two already. Hmm. So I was like, I know that some of them will swim slower because the 53 is like this. If you over swim, you're slower. And then I was like, it, it brought me some confidence in me. Like I was not, I was not the best. Huh? If you look at the ranking of the 2021, Ben swam 20 points, 21 four. Uh, Michael Andrew swam 21 three, I think. But I got the silver medal, the silver medal in 21 55, 56. Uh -huh. So this is important. And the the, the speech, like the, the the chat I had with them in 2012, I didn't understand at the time, but now I understand why they told me that. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful advice. All right, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll end but it honestly, here. How... Honestly, it's a beautiful advice. But when you're 21 and you go to your yeah, you're like, what the hell? You don't. Yeah. You you're, you're like, why? Why do you tell me to smile? Like, this is strange. Yeah. I, I honestly believe. Advice. Yeah, I honestly believe Usain Bolt was coached and makes a effort to relax and have fun on the starting yeah. blocks. I think he makes a hard effort to laugh and be fun on the blocks. To lower of their course. journey, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Sprinting is all about that too. Huh? It's uh, it's about being uh, relaxed and uh, and fast. So it's yeah. if you if you're too if you, if you are under under tension, like you cannot catch the water the same way. So 
easy speed and and, uh, and if you're good you yeah all right but the most important question is how much social kick are you doing in practice now <laughs> uh, at the moment not a lot because i'm alone so i can be social with myself <laughs> <laughs> but uh i love to do the social kick at the end of the session and uh and sometimes, honestly, I have some kicking, uh, not hard set, but, you know, in the warm-up, just kick. And I put my fins on and I'm doing kind of a social kick. So oh, I love yeah. the social kick. This is oh, the yeah. This is the That's best. right. Oh, we love it. We didn't, we didn't even yeah. pay him to say that, everybody. Um, <laughs> hey, man, thanks so much for hanging out with us and sharing some of your story. It's uh, super fun for me to, as especially or both of us as sprinters, um, but having known your sister in training at, at Auburn, um, you know, just cool to finally meet and have a conversation. So thanks very much for that. We're rooting for you and excited to just see your continued success, but it's fun to Thank hear you. about like how you go about doing it. So awesome, man. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Yeah, of course. All right. And uh, if you submitted questions and we didn't get to it, sorry, but keep those coming at social kick swim on Instagram. And um, that's it for this episode of social kick. We'll see you next time. Hey everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you're enjoying Social Kick, tell your friends about it, and be sure to tell us what you liked by leaving a comment, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Instagram, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Social Kick, and you can find all of our content on our website.